The objectives of this module are to explain the use of a mock-up set to plan your technical drawings, illustrate an iterative approach to designing a clear and concise set of drawings, explain standard drawing conventions and requirements, and show you some sample student work. Creating a good engineering design solution is an iterative process. This is also true of the process of creating technical construction drawings. Once you've selected a general approach for addressing your design challenge, you should begin to think about your final drawing package. This seems counterintuitive, but the truth is that beginning to create your construction drawings will help you clarify your thinking about your design. It can also be an aid to getting the entire team on board with the project and organized. To illustrate this iterative approach to creating technical drawings, we'll use a previous senior design project example. The MicroHydro team was tasked with designing a micro-hydroelectric power system for a small community in Colorado. In addition to providing electricity, the team was also asked to design a fire suppression system along the creek. After reviewing some possible design options with the community, the team decided to move forward with the design concept shown. With the high-level concept settled, the team decided to begin the journey from a rough conceptual sketch to a detailed engineering solution. Their first step was to create a mock-up drawing set. A good mock-up set determines the rough organizational scheme of your final drawing package. Notice that by laying out the organizational scheme, you're also capturing a rough idea of the drawings and schematics that will be required to completely communicate your design. And that, in turn, will help you clarify engineering tasks required. A good mock-up set will also encourage agreement on logistical issues like how many drawings you'll fit on a page, what paper size and scale will be used by all team members, and similar issues. This first mock-up set is likely just a collection of thumbnail images or hand sketches not to scale. So let's take a look at what our MicroHydro team's mock-up drawing set looked like. It was the hand-sketched collection of thumbnail images shown. The mock-up included a title page with background information on the project, a site plan with profiles, and then a plan for communicating the major elements of the proposed solution. Based on the concept, the team knew there would be trench work, water tanks, a dam, some hydrants, and a turbine. They also knew that electrical schematics would be needed to communicate the final power system adequately. With this initial collection of thumbnail sketches in hand, the team decided on a numbering scheme. The key to this step is to pick a flexible numbering scheme that can accommodate change gracefully. This means you'll need to suppress your desire for chronological numbers and come up with a better plan. There's no one right answer for numbering schemes. However, a typical numbering scheme for construction projects goes something like this. The OT series is used for general information, notes, and abbreviations. The 100 series is used for site plan views. The 200 series is used for section and elevation views of the site. And the 300 and above series are used to denote other categories and related details. The MicroHydro team used the proposed numbering scheme as follows. The title page was designated 001. The site plan was 101. The profile view was designated 201. And the other pages designating other details were numbered from 301 to 305. Finally, the electrical schematic was numbered 401, since it was a standalone section of the drawing package. By allowing room, it's easy to insert additional details in any of these areas without having to rename all of the drawings. Now let's test your knowledge of mock-up drawings. It was mentioned at the beginning of this module that creating a good technical construction drawing package is an iterative process. These iterations will typically go through several phases. The initial thumbnail or hand sketch phase early in the project, which we've already discussed. The hybrid phase, where your drawing set is a combination of some hand drawings and some CAD drawings woven together to capture the design. And then at least two rounds of CAD drawings. Diving into CAD too early can cause you to dive into details of the design before clarifying the overall big picture design. It's hard to resist the urge to dive into too much detail too early. But you need to pace yourself so that you avoid rework. Make sure to be aware of where you are on this iterative process and work with your FA closely to figure out the right approach for your project. The idea of a hybrid drawing set is a little concerning to some students, so let's look at an example of this from the MicroHydro project. The drawing title block shown was clearly created using a CAD software like AutoCAD. However, if we zoom in, those are a collection of hand drawings pasted into their appropriate places on the drawing sheet. Can you hand sketch, even if it's rough, the design you are intending before going into CAD? You'd be surprised by the mistakes you'll catch if you do this. The process avoids wasting time turning poorly conceived conceptual ideas into CAD and then having to fix them later. Now, let's say you've created your mock-up drawings, agreed to a numbering scheme, and general organization of the drawing package with your team. And maybe you've even created a round of hybrid drawings. 
Before you dive into creating detailed drawings, we need to talk about drawing conventions and requirements. When setting up your drawing package, make sure to use common conventions for page layout. Choose a standard paper size. 11 by 17 is a good starting place for most senior design projects. Then make sure every page has a title block on it and use the same title block throughout the drawing set. The title block can be located along the bottom of the page or along the right edge. Either is acceptable. Many senior design teams place it on the right edge, but either way, you should be consistent with placement throughout. When creating drawing views, there are conventional drawing scales. Stick to those. It looks bad when the auto scale leaves you with a drawing scale of 1 to 553.2. And finally, agree on the software the team will be using up front and stick to it. A good title block requires several elements. The name of the sheet and the number of the sheet, a drawn by and checked by box, Make sure both people are jointly responsible for the content and take this process of having someone else peer review your work seriously. Do not include an approved by in your title block because you are not professional engineers and do include a disclaimer. This work is done by students, not professionals. We are not liable and CSM is not liable for the content of these documents. These drawings are not released for construction purposes unless signed and sealed by a professional engineer after his or her independent review. Make sure you include a revision table in your title block and include the client's name and contact information in the title block. Lead into your drawing set with a well-conceived cover sheet. The cover sheet should contain the title of your project, your group name, the location map or vicinity map for your project, general notes, abbreviations, symbols, and legends as required. As you put together your drawing package, remember to clearly define the extensive work to be completed in the appropriate views. This is called the project or construction limit line. As you know, capturing and communicating where the project limit line is, is a critical step in controlling the project's scope. It's also important to use standard terminology for your views. Specifically, plan and section views have a standard definition. A plan view is similar to an aerial view. For our pepper here, the plan view would look like a horizontal slice of the pepper. A section view then is oriented 90 degrees from the plan view and cuts a vertical slice of the pepper. Note, you can have both longitudinal and transverse sections depending on which vertical plane we consider. When you show a section view, you may want to use heavy lines or solid fill to distinguish between portions that are cut versus portions that are background. Once you've determined your views, make sure that each drawing is complete. A complete drawing will have a title, number, a north arrow, the drawing scale, and dimensions, annotations, and symbols as appropriate. When annotating drawings and adding other information to the drawing package, there are a couple of best practices for the words on the page. Those include using a consistent font size and using all capital letters. Great, that covers the basics. Now let's test your understanding of drawing conventions. Please complete the quiz linked below. Navigating and understanding the relationships between drawings and a drawing package that you didn't create can be a challenge. If I were to give you any random page from a drawing package, could you figure out what was going on? That depends on a great deal of things, but there are a few best practices that will greatly enhance the ability of others to interpret your drawing package. So let's go through a few recommendations. One key to a great drawing set is to make sure your reader is always clearly oriented with respect to the site. Orient the reader by first providing a location map or a vicinity plan in your drawing package. Then, unless there's a compelling reason to do otherwise, orient the drawing so that north is pointing up. And finally, once you decide which way north points in your drawings, be consistent in all drawings. It is also recommended that you use grid lines in your drawing views. Grid lines can be extremely useful in guiding your reader during a design review, and also allows people to ask targeted questions by clearly identifying features in your drawing set. Typically, vertical grid lines are letters and horizontal grid lines are numbers. So, in a discussion setting, a person could say, I noticed on page 3, zone A5, that you get the idea. Finally, be clear with your drawings. When you create section views to show detail, use a larger scale so that readers can actually see the details you're trying to show, and avoid duplicating notes on different drawings. This can be very confusing to the reader and lead you to miss things when you go to make drawing updates. So now you have what you need to begin creating your technical construction drawings. For a sample of past student work, please see the MicroHydro sample drawing set attached to this module, and please complete the final quiz before closing the module.